put a lot of time into building Reach and giving fans sort of unprecedented amount of, of features and customization options to ideally sort of carry the torch long after Bungie's uh, development on, on Halo has stopped. So um, a lot of that burden is still going to rely on, on us and our, and our team to support the game, support the community uh, post-launch. The majority of our team has already moved on to, to different projects, but um, it's going to be important to us that, that this game has the legs and the lifespan and continues to have the experience that it deserves. The challenge for us that we're still actually, to be blunt, honestly, we're still actually talking through is how do we get our hands on all these new Forge World maps that are going to be made? How do we vet them? How do we get them into the hands of players? So we can sort of connect the dots, but we immediately understand that this is going to be a very important part of the game experience, and we're not taking it lightly, and we're not going to be naive about it, because for Halo 3, it quickly became overwhelming and more than we could admittedly keep up with as much as you know, we would have liked to, so it's important for us. It's safe to say that, you know, I'm sure there will be some official multiplayer maps that will be coming out post-launch as well that, that will be sort of the pure focused maps with awesome art that aren't sort of just Forge World variants. I mean, that said, we do have some Forge World variants that we've already produced internally and that we'll be rolling into matchmaking. So we have we have a couple that are already on the back burner that are ready to go. And, you know, Halo 3 didn't have the didn't have the luxury of having a, a foundry or a sandbox available at launch. So it's going to come until a lot later. So, I mean, I think it's both. I mean, there will be official default maps that people can expect to come, but hopefully in tandem at the same time, we will already start to see Forge World content coming online. It certainly is possible that, that you could see more firefight maps. Um, it's something that, that we'll definitely keep looking into, and uh, I guess we'll have to just sort of see what the fan community dictates and what the team ultimately feels inspired and interested in building. But it is a possibility. Well, I mean, there's, there's multiple things going on. I mean, we still have some people whose jobs are going to be to make sure that sort of all of our file sharing systems and all the backend stuff that will be running Bungie.net and allow you to start uploading game variants and tracking your, your stats and commendations and daily challenges and all these things. That work is still, you know, kind of wrapping up and people are bracing for this big flood of, that's about to happen on September 14th. Um, now on the other side, you know, hypothetically, if there were to be some competitive multiplayer maps or DLC type material coming, it takes time to, to build these things and play test them. And historically, looking back at prior Halo games, those teams have moved right into that work at the completion of, of, of the base project. So it wouldn't be far-fetched to assume that maybe similar work is happening right now back at Bungie. Inevitably, there will be some point in time where it's just not going to be practical or, or feasible for our team to, to continue sort of solely owning um, the Halo online experience because obviously we've, we've talked a lot about moving into other areas and we have a lot of work to do there and a lot of ambitious goals to, to accomplish. But reality is we're still sort of working with our partners at 343 and um, together we'll come up with a plan of when, how and where it makes sense to start to shift some of that responsibility uh, over to, to a different group and ultimately you know the most important part is just making sure that the community and the online game experience uh, doesn't suffer because of that. I mean you know that most of those Halo 1 maps were made by like one person in like a couple days if that, um, if the Kingdom High was, was was made in almost hours. I mean, that, that multiplayer came together so hot, Skull looking so, something like Blood Bowl, for example, is Skull not complicated taken. by today's standards, yeah, yeah. but it's still like one of the most played and one of the most multiplayer experiences. I guess it's a good example of maybe like less Skull is more. Taken. I don't know, one thing that comes to mind immediately, it's, I wouldn't say it's an immediate classic, but just I think one of the Halo 3 maps that stands out the most that, that hasn't come back is something like The Pit, which is probably the, the favorite default competitive map. I've had a lot of awesome games on that. Um, in terms of maps we haven't already covered though, I've played so much Rockets on Prisoner that uh, for me, I, I don't know, it's one of my special moments that I remember playing with my friends a lot that, that wasn't Blood Gulch, so I wouldn't mind seeing this Halo Prisoner remake. Seems practical. I think somebody could pull that off. Personally, not a huge fan of Hang'em High as much as other people, but um, I could see Hang'em High being easily reconstructed uh, in Forge World as well. Yeah.